Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and today, so far we don't have any rain, but once again, my my Little League team is, is going, we, we've hit in the cages so much because of all the rain, but we've had very little fielding practices, so we might be the best hitting team in the league that cannot field, because we haven't been able to get a field. That's what I'm facing going into opening day, I believe, is the, is this coming weekend and so uh not I, I don't feel real good right now about the the infield um but we need just two or three more practices okay i wanted to start this video uh and again we've got more and more new people that are coming into this space and i, I want everybody that that hears my voice to know about how Ripple is different and, and why XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created. And a big part of that is the that from the day I discovered Ripple, I've always felt like it was more than just some startup. The, I've, ever since from 2013 till now, um, I remember I think it was I think it was Bob Way who was one of the early uh, employees at Ripple. He, he made a comment that always stuck in my head. He, he said that he was one of the first 10 employees and that they always wondered if that was the day that their doors were going to be kicked in. So I've always asked, I, when I invest in XRP, I'm thinking to myself, part one of the many reasons this is a great investment is because there's a reason, if, if, if I ever learn the reason that they didn't get their doors kicked out in, uh, I think it's going to be a profitable reason. Okay. I think I do believe there's a major reason that they didn't, never had their doors kicked in. And I've, I've always thought in the back of my mind that this was much bigger than any of us even realized. Well, SPQR Media yesterday, they did their last video. They said it was going to be their last video. I hope it's not. But they did uh, what they said is going to be their last deep dive research video. And you need to go and subscribe to these guys and go watch this video. It's called XRP, The Truth and the End. Now, the other question that I've asked myself, and I've talked to my audience about this a lot, what company, startup or public, have you ever known that has, has gotten into so many important doors, central bank doors, who has been, what other company have you ever seen in your life who has been in the room with as many powerful central bankers and banks in the world? Not many. I don't even. I don't even think I've seen Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, in the room with as many central bankers as I have Brad Garlinghouse. Well, I've always felt like part of the reason for that was that this was much larger than we realized. This SPQR Media uh, uh, video takes you over to Europe and takes you to the very heights of not just power but the his history of power in the world. OK, and ties that in with Ripple. You need to go. I'm not going to spoil it. I want you to go see it. If you've wondered, why, how do we get how does Ripple get in the room with Christine Lagarde and all this? This video for me answers that question. It goes all the way to the very, very top of power. And, the, and they they present to you a guy that was on Ripple's board of directors, I believe, early on. And they tie in all of the wealth and power from history all the way back uh, in in uh, way back Europe. Um, so anyway, go watch that video. Now, when I saw that video, I said, well, now would be a good time to for me to go back through some of the people that are currently on, uh, a part of Ripple to show you why I believe that this is so much bigger than anyone realizes. And while I'm showing you this, let's say you're holding XRP and Bitcoin, and um, let's say you're holding XLM, and maybe Cardano, or maybe some Bitcoin Cash. What I want you to ask yourself as I go through this is, all these other digital assets am I holding, is there anything even approaching the connectedness um, with regard to the people that are running the show for that digital asset? In Bitcoin's case, it's just out there. There is no show. But 
the digital asset that you hold, the people that are wor working on the primary use case for that digital asset, whatever it is, and I can go ahead and tell you it's nowhere near close. Is it even in the stratosphere of the connections that Ripple has, the people that are a part of Ripple? And you'll find that the answer is a very bold no. It's not, nothing is anywhere close. This is why I've always, this is why I was able to create an entire channel out of talking about Ripple and XRP, because it's the one. So look at these people. Here we go. All right. And I'm not going to go through all of them because we've talked about some of them a lot. And Chris Larson, Susan Athey. This is the board of directors of Ripple. Brad Garlinghouse, Ken Kirsten. Let's get to Ben Lawski. Let's start there. First, Ben Lawski. Ben Lawski, CEO of the Lawski Group. He was the superintendent of financial services for New York, the state of New York. He was the chief of staff for the governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Now, I also, there's one other thing I want you to be thinking while you're sitting there as an XRP holder. We all we've seen for the last two years, oh, XRP could be called a security. I want to, I want you to ask yourself first, would, would any of these people come to be on Ripple's board of directors, Ripple, who is working on the primary use case for XRP? If any of them thought there was any chance on the planet Earth that their reputation could be tarnished by it being announced one day that XRP is a security. There is not one way in the world that that would happen. Um, and, and the other thing you need to be thinking is you better believe some of these people hold a lot of XRP. He was also, uh, let's see, the special assistant to the attorney general, the office of the New York attorney general, uh, assistant United States attorney, United States attorney for the Southern District of U U New York, chief counsel to Senator Charles Schumer, con current congressman Chuck Schumer. All right. He was a trial attorney. But anyway, and here's his pedigree, Colum pedigree, Columbia Law School, Columbia College, Columbia University is where he got his B.A. All right. There's one for you. <clears throat> the next uh, person on the board at Ripple is Anha Manuel. All right. Anna, I guess you say Anna Manuel. She's the co-founder and partner at Rice Hadley Gates. Um, she is a former diplomat, da, 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 da. Stanford a lecturer and fellow at Stanford University. Um, let's see what else. Special assistant to the undersecretary for political affairs, Nicholas Burns. Okay. She was an investment banker at Solomon Brothers. All right. Now let's look at, this is where she is right now. She's a, on the board of directors at Ripple, but she's also here at, um, uh, RIT, what's it? Um, uh, something Hadley. This public pilot. Wait, wait, I'll find it. The name of this thing here. Let me back up. It's Rice. It's Rice Hadley Gates is what they call it. Well, the first person there is Condoleezza Rice from 2000. Condoleezza Rice from 2005 to 2009. Rice served as the 66th Secretary of State of the United States and second woman and first African American woman to hold the post. All right. And then this guy's also at this company with her, Stephen Hadley. Hadley served for four years as the assistant to the president for national security affairs, 2005 to 2009. In that capacity, he was the principal White House foreign policy advisor to then President George W. Bush. And then you've got this guy. Remember Robert Gates? He's the, he was the 22nd Secretary of Defense of the United States. I mean, folks, if I stopped right here, would it not be enough? Okay, if I stop right here, would it not be enough to show you uh, these kinds of things don't happen for companies, folks. They don't just happen for companies. They don't, you don't just bump into these kind of, these type, these level people and they just, oh yeah, I'll join your board. No, that's not how the world works. Let's keep moving along. And then you've got her right there. Now I went to her bio. This is from her website, which is Anna, that's A A N. A N J A manuel.com. Well, I was, I was just scanning through here and reading some of the things she does. And I just randomly picked one thing she's a part of to go look at. She is the director of the Aspen strategy group and Aspen security forum, the premier bipartisan forum in foreign policy in the United States and is a member of the council in foreign relations. So I went and looked up this Aspen strategy group. 
There's an old picture uh, when, I guess, when uh, Condoleezza Rice was younger. The Aspen Strategy Group's mission is to provide a bipartisan forum to explore the preeminent foreign policy challenges the United States faces. It's cross-disciplinary, high-level examination of policy strategies for addressing preeminent and emerging topics makes it crucially relevant to the American and global policy communities. All right. I just wanted you to go I just wanted to go through here and just show you see if any names jump out at you that you might recognize. These are some of the most most powerful people in the world. Brent Sno Lieutenant General Brent Snowcroft, okay? You probably recognize that name. Anna Manuel, Zoe Baird who is also on Ripple's board of directors or or she's an advisor or one or the other. Madeline Albright, you probably remember that name. Uh let's let's go down through here. There's a few other names that you'll that you'll recognize, and I'm sure you'll see some that you recognize that I don't. Diane Feinstein, who was in Congress. I don't know if she still is. I don't think she is. Um, and then Stephen Hadley, who's also with her um, at the Rice Gates uh, company. Let's see, keep going. Sam Nunn, who was a con U.S. congressman. Um, let's see. Susan Rice, who worked for the Obama administration. I, I draw a blank on her title. And then I think David Sanger, I, I want to say, let's see, I think he was in the national security. He is a national security correspondent. He's a senior writer for the New York Times. So they have to have guys like that in here too. And then let's see, moving along, if we can find anybody else worth looking at. I think that's about, that's about it. But you saw there's some pretty high profile type people in here. Okay. Then we go on to Gene Sperling. Okay. Gene Sperling, we've talked about before. He was in the Clinton administration, former White House National Economic Advisor to President Obama and to President Clinton, now head of Sperling Economic Strategies. So that's a picture. This is a guy on Ripple's board. That's a picture of him in the Oval Office with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, the same guy that spoke at Swell, uh, Ripple's Swell Conference. And then you have Craig Phillips. Now, Craig Phillips was... Um, he was executive leadership. Let's see. Um, it'll tell you right here. Ripple expands global regulatory team in DC and joins the blockchain association. With this in mind, we are thrilled to announce that Ripple has expanded our global regulatory team. Uh, and it's, and is the first major blockchain company with a dedicated GR, uh, government relations office in Washington, DC. In addition, Craig Phillips, former counselor to the secretary at the U.S. Treasury Department, has joined Ripple's board of directors and will provide depth to Ripple's policy leadership bench. Finally, to help advance trust and innovation in blockchain and digital asset technologies, we are, we are now a member of the Blockchain Association, and Michelle Bond, Ripple's global head of government regulations, will sit on the board. So Craig Phillips is our next batter up, and that is a picture of him with Steve Mnuchin. He was an advisor to Steve Mnuchin. Again, folks, you don't see it. Name your name your digital asset and somebody that's working on their use case, and you and try to match it up to this. You won't. It won't. It's not going to happen. All right, uh, and then we go on. Now these are, I think. Let's see. Now we go to the strategic advisors. Zoe Cruz. All right. Let's see if I've got this right. Right here, Zoe Cruz was. Uh, She's got, she's on all kinds of boards. She's on the a member of the advisory council at Harvard Kennedy School. But if you go down here, she was with, she was a co-president at Morgan Stanley for 26 years. All right. And then I'm going to go on to Anthony Lim. Now, Anthony Lim's an interesting character. This is Anthony Lim right here. And I, this guy is not some just random that's put up here. All right. Um, Anthony Lim is is a strategic advisor to ripple um he's he's also an advisor at gic gic president americas in 2017 to present he's at gic what is gic i decided to look gic up established in 1981 to manage singapore's foreign services gic is a global long-term investor with well over a hundred billion dollars in assets in over 40 countries worldwide we work to secure Singapore's financial future by investing across a range of asset classes in the public and private markets. I decided to look at their governance. Um, our clientele, our client, the singular one client, 
The government of Singapore holds the GIC board and management accountable for portfolio performance. The board is responsible for long-term asset allocation and overall performance. GIC management formulates and, and executes investment strategies. Additionally, client, the client and board do not direct or influence GIC's decisions on individual investments. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, then we go and we look at the board of directors. The Prime Minister of Singapore, I guess, is their chairman. I don't want to look at that part. I want to look at their inter International Advisory Board is the one I'm interested in, so we might see some names we recognize. Um, this is, uh, let's see, any names that we were, oh, there's, look, this is one of CNBC's favorite guys who never says Ripple or XRP. Um, remember, many of us out here. With CNBC will never say the word Ripple or XRP, and they usually don't even want to flash the name on their screen. This guy is probably one of the most loved people on CNBC that comes on there quite often, especially when we're under a financial situation like we are right now. Uh, so Dr. Muhammad El Arian is on the board of this, uh, is, is one of the uh, advisory board, international advisory board members for this company that basically runs Singapore's finances. Now, one other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is this guy's on this advisory board as well, Uday Kotak, who's the managing di di director of Kotak Mahindra Bank. And I'm almost a thousand percent sure just a, a month or so ago that this bank announced that they would be working with Ripple. Yes. Okay. Now, moving along, I, I think that that's, that should probably be a pretty big eye opener for many of you that, have, that are just showing up in this space. Ripple is not your average company, and XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created. Better get on board before it's too late. I'm not a financial advisor, by the way. X-Men XRP, at XRP33. Um, this was from today, National Bank of Fujari, Fujari Partners, with Ripple, partners with Ripple for cross-border money transfers. Um, National Bank of Fujari announced its partnership. Through this blockchain solution, the bank's customers will now be able to conduct secure and real-time payments with clear end-to-end -end tracking of, of transactions. And I, I met this guy in Singapore when I was at Swell, one of the smoothest guys that I have ever been around. <laughs> Ripple chose their salespeople well. XRP Crypto will central banks will ask world leaders to back a roadmap for cutting costs of cross-border payments. The roadmap will look at costs, sticking points, and risks in payments and pinpoint how the public and private sectors can tackle them. Another one from XRP Crypto will, the Bank for International Settlements released a special BIS quarterly review on the future of payments, tokenization, cross-border payments, correspondent banking, central bank digital currencies, token to token, and token to account settlements. You can see it all being laid out right before our eyes, folks. Um, cross-border payments wholesale or real retail interlinkages, um, and then it shows their geographical diffusion of, for, of fast payment solutions, and then this is for, shows their, this from their quarterly review. All right, and then this was a very interesting tweet right here. The world's second largest money transmitter is holding XRP on its balance sheet. This is MoneyGram, folks. The company is compensated by Ripple in XRP for developing and bringing liquidity to foreign exchanges facilitated by the OT ODL platform. The company accounts for XRP received as an indefinite lived, indefinite live intangible asset, which, which is measured based on the fair market value of XRP. So <clears throat> I think this is the first of many companies that you're going to see holding XRP on their balance sheet. And finally, Crypto handler, this is a tweet about the, the stock market. The stock market will resume crashing on Monday. Get out while you can. People are freaking out and cashing out, and that will cause a bloody crash. This is bad. Market is heading for a 40% drop, says Muriel Rabini. He's the guy that's so anti-crypto. I bet you he's not anti-XRP. I wouldn't be surprised if he owns something. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. That Ripple is connected all the way to the very, very top of government, not just in the United States, but in, in the ECB, IMF, Europe, you, you name it. They go all the way to the top. This is